And uh, today I'm going to go over how to create an RDD report. So I did a quick outline in, uh, in the office here. Let me minimize the control. Okay. Uh, so these are the basic steps. So to the scenario was, let's create a report showing all open jobs and the demand links, i.e., sales orders or target jobs or, you know, what, or if it's to stock, like warehouse, that kind of stuff. So, so I kind of narrowed it down to these six kind of major steps. You're going to create a, a couple of BAQs. In this case, I'm going to create a job head BAQ showing open jobs that are released. We're going to prompt for uh, the date range, right? And then um, also create a, a filter parameter. Then we're going to create a job prod BAQ using the same parameters as above. So the next step is we're going to create a new RDD or report data definition. So we're going to add the two data sources, the two BAQs, uh, create a criteria set, create prompts, uh, create the filter. Then we're going to uh, we're going to create a report style. We're going to add the RDD that we created in step two. Um, set the destination path and name for the report. Create the report, which is going to be blank. Um, then we're going to add the report to the menu. And we're going to preview the report to make sure it works. And then we're going to use the system monitor to actually develop the report. So. Those are the big picture steps. Let's get started. So let's see. Step number one, create the BAQ. Well, I've kind of already done that, so hopefully this will save a little bit of time. Um, so if I go into B, I'm in the education database, by the way. So, all right. And I prefix all my reports with RPT. That was a Dan Edwards suggestion. Thank you, Dan. I love doing that. Um, so, and I'm going to, I called this, uh, well, a summary two in prod two, right? So let's just pull it up because I could go through how to create a BEQ, but you guys, I think, kind of kind of know that already. And this one's pretty simple. If you look at it, there's just job head. There's no other sub queries. It's just job head. So, and then what I did here is I added some parameters. And the parameters were a start date um, and uh, yeah, uh, a from and a to. Uh, that's the job start date, from and to. And then I have a job list. And these are, by the way, if you, when you go to create these parameters, these are just basic, uh, we're here, common editor, right? And these are put in as date fields. So this one is a varchar, uh, just character field, but it's kind of a special type. It's called an item list. So you could go common editor, but in this case, I want to go item list, and then you set the skip condition if empty. And that's because we're going to use that right here as one of our filter, one of our table criteria. We're going to say job num in, right, rather than equals, we're going to say in, and then there's a thing here for list parameters, specified list parameter, and that's that's the parameter that we added, and we'll say okay. So what that's going to mean is that we don't, we'll be able to use this, the, the filter part of this, you know, the standard Epicor filter, and you'll see that in a, in a, in a minute here. So. All right, so that's the one query, and let's pull up the other query while we're at it. Um, I hold down the shift key and press or click on the business query. I can bring up another instance, so I can have two of these open at once. A little trick that hopefully most of you know. And uh, again, this one, oops, not, no. I want this to be current user. All right, go to RPT. 
we want job prod two. So in this scenario, I have a job head and I'm going to connect it up with job prod. So now granted I could do this all as one BAQ rather than going multiple BAQs, but this is just a really simple example and hopefully you can kind of infer what to do. Um, so for instance, if you knew, wanted to rebuild the job traveler, that'd be very difficult to do as a single data set. So, so the, what I'm gonna show you today, Epicor will create a single data set, but it doesn't have to. Uh, and I'll, we'll, we'll, I'll show you that in a, in a few minutes here. So, so for now, um, we're just gonna say, okay, job prod, um, is gonna, it's gonna end up getting the same job number as our job head table, because we're gonna set up a relationship. And then what I included here, where um, company job number, the customer, if there is one, order num, if there is one, target job num, if there is one, or like warehouse code, if it's a, right? So, um, uh, so yeah, so now, like I said, I, I won't do it today, but normally I would not join these two together because then you end up with a bunch of extra records, right? If you're, let's say you're trying to do a job travel and you pick up one particular job number and it has multiple um, sales orders that are part of the demand source, but you're going to get multiple records. You might get six, 10 records, I don't know, whatever. Um, and you can deal with that at the SSRS level by doing groupings and stuff, but it makes life a lot more difficult because if you want to do uh, count, then you have to do the group by and you have to be really careful about, you know, um, not getting too much information. Plus things kind of expand on you. I mean, I mean, if you think about it, if you get one job number with let's say six sales orders tied to it, that's okay. That's going to be six records. And each of those six records is going to have how many ASM, job ASMs. And each of those ASMs, is going to have how many job offers? Well, you're going to have six times all of those records. So you can see this thing, it, it's going to blow up really quick, right? So yes, you can deal with them in a single uh, SSRS report, but I found it just much easier to do job fraud as a, a sub-report. So, all right, so I'm kind of getting preachy there now, aren't I? And I'm, gonna, I'm telling you what to do, but I'm not showing you. So well, let's get down. I know you guys just want to get the, we'll, we'll do the basics. We'll, we'll crawl first and then, you know, maybe I'll do another session and we'll, where I'll show you how to do this as job prod as a, like a sub report, right? Cause that's, that's how I would do it. So I want for your every one job, I want to have a sub report that can show however many job prods there are. So, all right. So um, I think I showed you job prod. Yep. Customer, okay. So we have our two BAQs, uh, and I'm going to just minimize that for now. And then the next step, uh, let's see, is step two, right? Which is create the new RDD. Okay, let's do that. So we're gonna go down to reporting and we're gonna go to, oh, there you are. Report data definition. Okay, I'm gonna say I wanna create a new one. And this is gonna be RPT job memory two, what I'll call it. Okay, memory two, report type. All right, so we're gonna save that. Next step is gonna be, we're gonna add a BAQ and we're gonna add the BAQ that we that just was showing you. So let's add the job head. Um, yeah, which is the summary, summary two. Yep. And I, I usually just copy this over. Save it. Okay, we're gonna bring in the second BAQ. That's the power of this, this program is you can you can add as many BAQs as you want. So to me that's that's huge. 
All right, so let's bring in job prod two. And again, I'm just going to copy that over. All right, so we have two BAQs. Um, and the next step, go back to my list here. Create the, so we want to create a criteria set, create the prompts, and create the filter. So, okay. So we need a criteria set. So let's do that. Uh, new report criteria set. And I'm just going to call it, uh, I don't know, RPT job summary. And I'll use the same thing for the description. And I'm going to make this the default. All right. So we have that. So now let's go to, um, now we could just add a prompt. Right, new report criteria prompt, but they have a cool little function here for uh, criteria mapping. That's going to look at the uh, parameters in the BAQ. So you can see we have uh, there's our from and two dates. So I want prompts for these but not for this, because the job list is, we want that to be a filter, right? So I'm going to click on the button that says Create Prompts, and then Epicor is going to add these, these two prompts. Uh, I always check the order, so from and to, one and two. That looks correct. And here you get a chance to set the default or change the editor type or you know, you can you can make set default. Yeah, you can make a bunch of changes here. Let's save that, and then let's go to back to criteria mapping. Let's pick this guy, the job list, and we want to. Oh, I'm sorry. I need to. I don't think it can automatically create this one. I think we have to manual, manually do it. All right, so let's do a new report criteria filter. Filter name is going to be job num. Okay, filter is going to be job head, job num. I don't know why that comes up, but it does. And we'll save this. And then we go back to our mappings, and we pick this guy as a filter. It's not; mm -hmm. it doesn't show there. But if we refresh this, say I want a filter here. Now it shows up. Okay, and we do a save. All right. So now we have job num as a filter, and we have a date range for the, for the, the prompts that are going to happen. So the next step, and I didn't have that in my list, but for this scenario, we're going we're gonna to add relationship. So let's add the new, uh, where are you here, new relationship. All right, so I'm going to call this job summary two, uh, yeah, two job prod. Yeah, let's call it that. Parent's going to be that guy. Uh, there's no key, but job prod's going to be there. Then we're going to do new. We want to say company to company. Always include company, by the way, uh, just because it's a key field that's used for indexing. So it'll run faster. All right, company to company, job num to job num. Let's save that. So this is one of the kind of, I think, the limitation, not a limitation, but it, it um, 
if I'm showing you the easy way to do it, and what Epicor is going to do is they're going to they're going to do a left outer join of these two, uh, so you can't really control the relation type, and you're going to end up with one data set. So, um, so for the for the you know the classic example, the things you've been using, um, this is going to work the same way. You're going to end up with one data set. It's going to join both of those BAQs for you. So. To me, uh, I don't, I don't like doing that. Like I said, I, I prefer to have job prod as a separate, um, a separate data set. And so, so to do that, uh, there, there's a, there's a different way of, of structuring this. But for now, we're trying to keep it simple, kind of trying to keep it short and sweet. So we'll just add the relationship. We'll join these two, and I think that's it for the. RDD, uh, yeah, yes, yep. So now we're moving on to step three. We're going to create the new, uh, the new report style. All right. So let's just kind of park this off on the side. Let's go to report style. And I don't know what this is, but we're going to do new, new report, give it the same name, report summary two, summary two. All right, this one, it's not critical to the report, but it could affect you down the road. So what I do is go to browse, and then this is going to go to your local client. I go all the way to the bottom, and you're going to want to pick this guy, dynamic criteria. So where that's going to get used is if you decide to use the advanced printing and routing APR, um, then it's going to use this report service. So you're not required to put it in. You could leave it blank. But down the road, if you try to do, uh, let's say that you want this report to be um, run on a schedule, then of course it, it, won't, it won't work. You'll, you'll have to come back and add this. So maybe I'll well just do it now. It's not that big of a deal. Like I said, go to browse, go to the bottom of the list, um, and it's uh, this guy, dynamic criteria. So for a while there, I used to call these dynamic criteria reports because that's the service that's again, that gets used. But I think the more common phrase I see for this, this type of report is an RDD report. So I'll call it that just to be consistent with the, with the, I guess what, you know, the slang that people are using. So, all right. So we have our report style created, but now we need to add a report style, and we're going to call this. Uh, I'll call it the same thing. Uh, summary two. All right. I always change this to SQL. Um, here's the data definition, which is actually already there and correct. Report location is going to be reports, custom reports, then RPT job summary two. You want to set the output location to database and then save it. And if the report criteria bar doesn't show, then just hit refresh and it should show up. And then here's our number when we were in the report criteria, we or when we were in the data definition, we set up a report criteria and we gave it a name. That's where that, that that's where this name is coming from. It's not a BAQ, it's not the name of the RDD, it's the name of the report criteria that I created. And you can see where, if you wanted to, you could create multiple report criteria, and then each report style might use a different criteria. So I have yet to do that yet, to be honest with you, but you can see where the, you know, the plumbing is there So for, for us to do that. So, all right. So this is our report style. Um, so then the next thing we're going to do is create the report. And to do that, we go to Actions, 
and then we say create SSRS report. And then what's going to happen in the background is Epicor is going to add the blank SSRS template to the server and associate it with this name. As a matter of fact, we'll see in just a minute here when it's done, this will update this report location. Come on, Epicor. Thinking. Come on. This, this is the education database, so it's. I don't think, I don't think it gets much for resource. <clears throat> That's okay. I'll take a little, little sip of coffee here. There we go. All right. So you can see what it did. It took our report summary two and it added this guy, which is going to be, that's going to be an RDL, right? Um, well, and yeah, we'll see that. So, so now that we've created, it's, it's been created, uh, what's my next step? Create report style. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. All right. So we're at step four in my list here. We're going to add the report to the menu. So I wish Epicor had, and they probably will in the future, give you the chance to, like, preview or, right, because they do for the other um, when you do a, a BAQ report, they, I know they have, you can actually test out the interface. But for the RDD report, they do not. So, so to do that, we have to go into uh, menu maintenance. Thinking, thinking. I click twice. It's like pushing the elevator button more than once, right? Doesn't make the elevator come any faster. But it feels better. It's cathartic. All right. So here we are at, uh, let's see. I'm going to put this into reports. I think I had one in him from before. Yeah, that one. I made him a 2000, so, or 20. Did I? Yeah. Okay, all right. So we'll make we'll make this one 2020. All right. So I'm gonna do a new menu, and we're gonna start it. Um, to the job. Um, two. Yeah, that'll work. Summary. Just yeah, good enough. I believe I had the BAQs for all companies, I think. And we'll make this 2020. All right, so here's the trick. Uh, you need to go down to, in this list, there's just report. And see the service that's being used? Dynamic criteria report. Now we're going to go look at reports. And unfortunately, there's a bunch there. but if if you use a prefix like I'm doing with RPT, again, thank you, Dan Edwards, uh, we can find ours pretty quick. RPT job summary two. And we're going to save it. And this is where things get kind of ugly. Um, and when I say ugly, I mean you can't really just go into it. You need to, you need to, uh, go out of Epicor and come back in to get the menu to refresh. I don't know if somebody has a trick about doing that. I don't know what that trick is, but. See if I take that right. It's like a really long password. 
There we go. Thinking, thinking. All right, so if we go into job management reports, there's our job summary two. And this is kind of our first chance to try out the interface. So, um, so I happen to know that this, the data we want is all in 2020. So I'm gonna just say is it one, 2020. There we go. So, and just, just to, for those that are curious, here's the job filter, right? Where you can go in, you can, you can say, here's the, here's the jobs I want. And you can pick multiple jobs or one job. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna leave it, run, run it wide open like this. And if we preview it, give that a try. Okay, so we get the report. It's totally blank because, and that you should be used to that, right? Because if you're using the BAQ report designer right now, you get the same thing. It's it's the same template, so it's blank. We have to we have to add the stuff that we want. So so this is the part that maybe you don't use or know that much about, but I use it all the time because um, most of my customers are are cloud customer. So um, we're going to do the design SSRS report. So, all right, so that's this guy right here. So I'm going to click on, can I get the bubble? Give me the bubble. There it is, generate for design. All right, so we're going to do generate for design. And then I'm going to pull up the system monitor. And oh. oh, there it is. Okay, there's the confirmation. Uh, let's refresh this list. There we go. So you can always tell these, the ones that are do, where you do the generate for design because the last action always shows us none. So then the next step is to go to actions. We want to design SSRS report. Okay, and what this is going to do, it's going to, well, well, I'll keep going here. And you're going to do a download. And then I'm going to go into education reports. And I'll just say, okay. Says, do you, would you like to open the report definition for editing? Yes, I would. Okay. This report requires connection to the report server. Uh, of course, if you're cloud-based, you, can, you can't do that. So just say no here. So if you're on-prem, you could connect up to, the, the, uh, um, to your server directly and make the changes. I kind of don't re uh, recommend it. I kind of, even people that are on-prem, I kind of recommend they do it this way because it kind of ends up being a poor man's revision control because you're making all the changes locally on your machine, uh, and you can test them uh, without affecting anybody in live. So technically you could work against live data because they're not gonna see what you're doing until you publish it. So when we're all done here, um, we're gonna go to actions and then publish, and then it's gonna copy um, all of our RDDs, uh, or I'm sorry, the RDLs uh, up to the server. So at this point, we're working locally, and we can make as many changes as we want. We're not, not affecting anybody. So, but to just kind of test it out, we can do a preview. And yep, that's that's what we expect. And you can kind of see what's going on here. Epicor is giving us this, this GUID, right? For those of you that understand the plumbing behind how Epicor does SSRS, this is the GUID that's attached to the uh, as a, like a suffix to all of the table names. So it can kind of keep track of who printed what, when, that kind of stuff. So, um, 
And again, we don't have direct access to the database, so this is kind of our, this is our tool. This is the thing that we can use to preview the report. So let's do something just quick and dirty here. Let me show you what Epicor did when we did the relationship. It creates one data set. Of course, you have these others that we can, we're going to ignore for now. Um, and you can, it's got our, our main table stuff, which is like job head, right? All the job head stuff. But you can see it has the all the job prod and customer stuff also. So it's really just one bit it, it Epicor, well if we go into this guy, you can see the select statement. Right? And it's really just yeah. It's it, it's it, what they've done is they're taking here from let me create a little separation here. Yep. From that's going to be a T1, then they're going to go left out of join. Um, yep, that's pretty much it. So, um, so Epicor is doing the join for you. Now, like I said, if I was if I was doing this report, I would have a separate data set and I would do this as a sub report. But, um, but rather than doing a left outer join, if you do this as a separate data set, then you can choose what kind of join you're going to make, right? Now, the thing that kind of sucks is you have to put in all the field names by yourself. So that kind of, that's kind of crappy. But, um, but for now, we're going to keep things simple. And so let's right click and do an insert. I'm going to go with the list element. And then for list, we're going to set the, oops. And pick the upper left corner there. And then over here in data set, we're going to pick that's the data set I want to use. Okay. So, and again, I'm not going to spend a lot of time making this pretty, but let me just, um, you know what? I'm not even going to do that. Let's just delete the, I deleted the um, the rectangle that was in there, so this is just a text box now. What that's going to do is I can bring these guys in, let's say job num, and they'll just be added. Our description. Let's jump over to what ID, customer name, and we're going to have this. Some aren't. Let's say target job. I don't know. And then let's shrink this up. All right. So let's just pretend we spent hours and hours making this really pretty. So now we want to see, well, how, how does it look? Well, come over to this guy. Go to Actions, Preview. And survey says, OK, yeah, we're getting, we're getting data. It's not pretty, but we are get we're getting data. Let's just, what is that third? That needs some room, doesn't it? Oh, part number, that's why. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. We'll give you a little room to a little room to breathe there. Cut down the number of trees we have to chop down. There we go. Yep. So so you get the idea. I mean from here. It's really formatting and putting on the lipstick, right? Uh, cleaning things up and making sure dates are dates and numbers are numbers and all that happy stuff that I know you guys already know how to do. So, all right, so let's pretend we're done. Um, I, I wouldn't be because it, just, you know, there's usually a bunch of extra stuff that has to go into this, but we're just, we're, we're trying to make it you know, short and sweet. All right, so uh, I'm done with this. And so what I'm going to do is do you want to say, yes, I'll save my changes. Now I want to go to Actions, and I want to say Publish. It says Publishing will overwrite what's there. And you say, yes, please. All right, so now we're done with this interface. And now we can retry this guy. So let's do the preview instead of the design. Okay, and there we go. There it is. 
just that simple. So, so in some in some ways, this wasn't a real fair example because I I generally would not do this as a as a single data set. I would do it as multiple data sets, and um, maybe when I have a little more time, another another session, um, I'll show you how this can be done using different data sets without join having Epicor join them for you. So, I mean, big picture, what I can tell you is. Uh, do I have that here? No. Um, at the BAQ level, you basically, I include all of the parameters, and then I join all the parameters in the RDD. So that way they're not, they're not joined at the RDD level. They're, they're actually run separately. You run a job head BAQ and you run a job prod BAQ, and they end up becoming completely different data sets. And then so once I have those multiple data sets, what I do with them and SSRS is really up to me, right? I can I can join and make, I, I can make a left outer join and have all the things that Epicor does for me, um, or I can do sub reports and just pass parameters saying, only show me this job number, right? So uh, for me, it makes subtotaling and doing, you know, counting groups, that kind of thing, it makes things much, much easier. So, okay, that's pretty much all I have for you today. Like I said, it was kind of short and sweet. And um, I don't know, I guess if you guys have any uh, questions or comments, please add those to the bottom of the list here. And um, yeah, good luck. <laughs>